Hello, and welcome to the first ever edition of Primetime Preps right here on Hit That Line, ESPN Arkansas, all of the uh, platforms of ESPN Arkansas, and then, of course, the uh, Arkansas Sports Network, Um, and you can like the Arkansas Sports Network on Facebook by just going to the Arkansas Sports Network, looking for that logo, and liking the page so that's, it. that's all we got to do i'm brad caldwell along with me is mr producer and just all around good guy and yeah. kind of know everything <laughs> bill harshaw it's good good to be here brad i know this is a, a long time coming we've been looking at, at doing a program like this for uh, quite a while and it's good to sign, uh, finally see that come to fruition. Yeah, it's been a long time coming, and, but we're excited to be here. We want to thank ESPN Arkansas for giving us the opportunity to do this program and, and pretty much the first ever statewide high school podcast. And uh, we're, we're just delighted to, to do this. So um, anyway, we just want to introduce ourselves a little bit and just tell you a little bit about who we are. First off, we're the broadcast team for the Pottsville Apaches live stream. Uh, just started that this year. Of course, lots of live streams going out this year due to COVID and all that. Bill is the play-by-play. I'm the color. Um, we both have extensive experience in covering high school sports. Bill has been play-by-play for just insert X, and that's where he's been. And um, I've done color for the Dover Pirates. I've written for the Atkins Chronicle. Uh, Most recently, I was a part of River Valley Now as uh, the sports director there. And I was um, on the River Valley Touchdown Show. I've also been a part of the Corlisville broadcast. And so we've had a lot of things that we've just been around sports quite a bit. Definitely been around the world a couple of times, so to speak. And you know, I you mentioned the, the different places that I've been, and I've done play-by-play here in the River Valley for teams like Danville. Uh, also, I've done some Dover games right along. You know, probably not at the same game as you, but uh, have done that as well. As and uh, been down in Mina. Spent a couple of years down in, in Mina on KENA, uh, as well as with the Creative Sports Network and KASR out of Conway. So. Definitely some experience behind these desks. Oh, I forgot I did Huntsville Eagle broadcast as well for a while. So we've just been around the block, but I'll tell you one thing. We love high school sports. Um, It's something that has gotten into my blood over the last couple years with the uh, show that we were doing for the last couple years on River Valley Now. Um, It's been an exciting time, and, you know, we're just really kind of just – head spinning kind of um, as all of this has come together Um, but man this is an exciting time here and we're just delighted so I want to get to tell you just kind of what this show is going to be about and what we want to do is bring you the primetime names the primetime coaches the primetime players and the primetime games um here in Arkansas. We want to bring those to you every week. We want to tell you about who's playing where and and what's going on and the best games with the best teams. And then, of course, as time goes on, playoffs come around. It's going to be even more exciting around here. It's going to be a lot of fun, of course. You know, like you mentioned, the COVID, not a whole lot of people, you know, had any idea on what this season was going to look like. Uh, We have seen some games throughout the course of the season get canceled rearranged, moved around, whatever you have you. So um, it's definitely to have a, a good idea to have a good source on where you can find all of the, the information that you're looking for for high school football across the state. High school football and you know, high school basketball as well will be um, heavily involved with high school basketball as, as this thing moves forward. So there's a lot of things that we want to do, and I'm sure that this thing will grow and evolve as we go. But right now, we're excited to bring you primetime preps. And so, with that being said, we're going to go to our first break. When we come back, we're going to talk to Coach Craig Bentley about the Bearcat bomb over the last week. Here, in the heart of the River Valley, is St. Mary's Regional Health System. Here is the area's most comprehensive range of medical services, 
along with advanced treatment options and responsive emergency care. Here is our team of more than 900 professionals who bring health care to life through people caring for people. And it is here where you can count on St. Mary's to always be, because to us, community matters. For more than 90 years, our investment in our community has been unmatched. And today, that couldn't be stronger. St. Mary's, we're here for you. back into primetime preps brad caldwell bill harshaw with you and uh man if you if you miss this this part or this play i should say um you are just in for a treat here i'm telling you it's a really good uh good play i saw it friday night uh we were out at the game uh pottsville at lamar it came through uh online for us and i saw that play uh right toward the tail end of our broadcast and it was like wow that was an impressive Absolutely, and you don't see many games that end this way. Um, the Mina Waldron game is a big time rivalry. Bill, you've been a part of that rivalry before. You know a lot about that. I do. Uh, you know that was a, a big game for the Bearcats uh, every year. You always kind of circled that date on the calendar uh, for when they were coming in, and so you know it's always going to be a fun time when you when the Mina. Uh, and Waldron get together. Of course, there was a time when both teams uh, were kind of at the, the bottom of the barrel. And that, that was for, you know, who was not last. Uh, and that was the couple years that I was there. Whereas there wasn't a whole lot of wins for either one of those ball clubs. And, of course, today, both of those ball clubs have kind of turned things around a little bit. Um, Waldron has a brand new stadium. Uh, I remember when I was calling games at Waldron, you would be up in that press box and it's literally swaying back and forth. <laughs> and it was terrifying, to say the least. It yeah. was terrifying. Um, so, I mean, they got a new, new field, new turf. It's definitely an old new program all the way around. Of course, we've, we've been in a few uh, press boxes here where uh, you feel like you're kind of fearing for your life <laughs> on a daily basis. So, anyway, we're excited to bring you Coach Craig Bentley, and we're going to talk about the Bearcat Bomb. We're going to set up uh, something today that's really exciting. Um, we like to bring just different aspects of high school football. And last Friday night, we had one of the best plays that you will ever see here on a Friday night or, or anywhere else for that matter. Um, we call this the Bearcat Bomb. As me, we're tied at 21, and time running out, and Max Montgomery hits Gavin Hooper for a. 50 plus yard Hail Mary and a touchdown to win the game over Walden, a big rivalry game. And we've got Coach uh, Craig Bentley here on the uh, Jerome and Associates hotline. Coach Bentley, man, nice to have you. Hey, great to be here, and I appreciate you guys having us on. Man, it, it was an exciting time there at Walden. Of course, Walden is a very improved team this year. Um, and uh, you guys came in, you guys were one and two, but you played a tough schedule leading up into that ball game. Tell us about that play and the game itself. So it was a, a big game for us. I mean, we're coming off a pretty tough non-conference slate. Uh, we, we played two really tough opponents in Harding Academy and Denver in the field. And those two teams are likely to, to be you know, facing each other in the state, the state championship game if, if that brackets end up for them. So, um, and then we played a tough Hot Springs team, a 5A opponent who who's on the rise and, and done well. And um, we didn't come up with a win in any of those three games, but we came out better from it. We definitely learned some lessons from it. And uh, we knew that those three games would get us prepared for, uh, for our conference slate. So, um, you know, the water game for us um, – traditionally has been a, a pretty good rivalry game for both communities. Like I told our kids, you know, this game means something to both communities. So it's a big game. And, of course, it was the first first conference game for us. So, uh, you know, we know going into it that it was going to be a battle. They're, they're much improved. They have some of uh, the best skilled kids in our conference. Uh, they're very well coached. Uh, and we knew it was going to be a barn burner all the way through, and uh, it sure was. It so. turned out to be that. So 
take us through that play. I mean, you guys are running out of time there. Um, you've got one of the leading passers in the state, Max Montgomery. Um, so talk us through what was going on, what was running through your mind, and what was going on around the, the, the program right then when you guys called that play. Sure. So we, we get the ball back. Uh, you know, we had a 21-14 lead, and then they came back and tied it uh, with about 35 seconds left, um, you know, on a long drive. And um, they decided to kick their point and tie the game. So we knew getting the ball back, we'd have anywhere between 25 and 30 seconds. Uh, we got the ball back on our 35. So, you know, we had to go around, you know, 65, 70, uh, 70 yards to, to drive. And, and we have a pretty good field goal kicker. So our initial thought was let's try to get in field goal range and try to win this thing um you know i know there there might be some thought to try to get to overtime but we weren't looking to try to get to overtime uh you know we we, we feel very confident in the weapons that we have and, and the players that we have that we could have at least you know at worst get, get ourselves in field goal position um so that first play for us was actually we had to throw it away um uh, we were again on the 35. It was first and 10. And we had to throw it away because uh, our protection broke down a little bit. When we weren't open. So uh, from there, we decided to run a little jet sweep uh, with one of our most athletic players. It was actually Gavin Hooper uh, that got the jet sweep, and he took it for about a 20, 25 yard gain. So when that happened, you know, okay, here we go. Uh, we can uh, get ourselves in position even even more now. So we call a timeout at that point. And and interesting up to that point, we we've we've had a little bit of uh, we had a little bit of protection issues through the night. Um, so we had been in max protect situations. We had two backs in there. Um, so we, we decided to break from that and, and, and kind of roll the dice with it. Um, uh, so we called a play that, that if it hits big, it would put us in great field goal position. Um, but the check down off it was a good 10 yard pass. So Max hit the check down, a good 10 yard pass, which was huge because that extra 10 yards, you know, allowed us to get in position to throw, uh, throw the vertical route off of it. So we got that extra 10 yards from Mason Brotherton, um, who's, a, who's a great player for us. And then uh, I think we were on the 45, actually. And, and again, we got out of match protect. We put five receivers on the field. We wanted to spread the field out, make them cover everybody out there. Um, and, uh, and our offensive line just, just, you know, we decided at that point. We, we work on a couple different things. I mean, you know, I think everybody's probably got the, you know, the, 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 the toss backs and the everything like that, the hook and laterals and all that stuff. But – you know, we decided to to let our let our players do do, do a couple crossing deep routes and, and throw it up to our one of our good athletes and uh, man, uh, we we just decided to pull for it, go it, go it, and the offensive line did a a great great job protecting. Uh, they brought pressure off the edge, um, and we had nobody for it because we were an empty. So it wasn't our offensive line fault. It was we didn't have a back back there to pick it up. So I brought quarterback was. This is tough. You see the senior quarterback, he stepped in there. He wasn't thrown off by that cut by that blitz. Tossed it up there to Gavin Hooper. Gavin actually caught it on the five yard line. I don't know if you can tell from that video as much, but he actually catches it on the five yard line and then it stems, you know, into the end zone. And uh, you know, just just a once in a lifetime memory. Uh, you know, it's just it's a great memory uh, for those kids and, and just a great ending in that game. And I think you said it in there. That, that doesn't happen very, very often. I've been a part of some games where you win it, you know, but there's still some time left. So you win it to get overtime. Or even the defensive stop is, is big and exciting, but it's not quite as exciting as catching that touchdown. Yeah. It was an emotional game for us. I was super proud of our kids because um, we got down at 1.14 to 7. They had a pick six, and then we reeled back and answered back and got it to 21 to 14. But then Waldron did a great drop, job and tied it at 21. So there were multiple times where our team, you know, could have laid down, but they didn't. They kept fighting, and, and they found a way to win. And it was huge for us. especially. We needed that, especially because coming off our last three non-conference games, they've, they've been pretty tough. Uh, so we definitely needed that against a good, good conference opponent. Man, what an exciting win, no doubt about it. Not only – the way you won, but against a, a rivalry it has to be a rivalry, I assume. I mean, me and Waldron just right up the road from each other. Um, man, what was what's the reaction in the town been like over the last day or so? We uh, we do a coaches show here um, every week, and me and the me and the guy that was hosting, you know, we we kind of joking. It's a lot more fun to do do a coaches show after an <laughs> ending and a win like that than it is after these last three weeks have kind of been for us. But everybody's been super excited. Uh, you know, again, it's just, you know, it's, it's a play that everybody that was there, and even if you weren't there, uh, you'll always remember. It'll always be talked about. 
um, you know, these, these seniors have worked really hard and, and been a good group for us. It's a memory that they'll have forever. So, you know, it's, it's a play that will definitely live in Bearcat history as we go forward. Now, you mentioned Mason Brotherton. Brotherton is a Kansas commit on your team. Yeah, yeah, he's committed to Kansas. He's, you know, uh, make, make some big-time plays for us. We missed him on a touchdown earlier. We overthrew him or kind of, you know, threw him to the outside a little bit. Uh, but he had some big catches in that game. And including that 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 previous play, like I said, that's not going to get a lot of the publicity, of course, because of the way that the game ended. But if we don't complete that little 10-yard out to Mason, you know, we're trying to throw that ball 10 yards deeper, and that becomes a lot tougher. So – uh, it's a very, very important play that he made right before that game, and he's made a lot of big plays for us all year. So now you got a big 4A4 matchup at Pottsville, and you're playing on the brand-new turf there at Pottsville. First game that they – first home game for Pottsville this year in game six for them. Um, talk a little bit about that matchup. Well, you know, Pottsville, Mina, it's, 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 it's been kind of a very interesting matchup. You know, I, I'm from Mina. I was here, you know, this is my second year as head coach, but I was here for five years before that as a, as a defensive coordinator. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's always been an interesting matchup. Uh, the two physical football teams, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, Pottsville's kind of had uh, a, a kryptonite, I guess, for Mina in the last several years. So, um, it's always a good game, like I said, whether it's at Mina, it's at Pottsville, it's a good physical game. It's a back and forth game usually, um, and you never really know which way it's going to go. So uh, it's it's another big, you know, for four a conference matchup for both teams at this point. Absolutely, and you know, the ironic thing I told you on the phone was that uh, myself and Bill here, we do the Pottsville home games or we do the Pottsville games um, on the stream. So we're going to be there, and so we'll look forward to meeting you on Friday night. All right. Well, hey, Coach Bentley, thanks for joining us here on the Jarrow and Associates Hotline. Uh, it's been nice to have you. Appreciate you. Go Bearcats. All right. All right. Thank you. And that is Coach Craig Bentley of the Mina Bearcats uh, and talking about the Bearcat bomb and the big win over Waldron. It was a big win over Waldron. Um, you know, Waldron is a team that has improved quite a bit over the last year or so. Um, doing a great job down there in Bulldog Land, and uh, that that game is is odd. It's it's a rivalry game, kind of like uh, Michigan Ohio State in some ways right now, where Mina comes out on the the victory end quite a bit. I think they've won forty one now of the last forty nine ball games against Waldron, but you're talking about a game that came down to the very last play of the game there at Waldron, and Mina was able to pull it out. And it's just absolutely, you're absolutely correct. You know, a lot of times when Mina and Waldron would get together, uh, you would end up with, uh, you know, Mina usually coming away with it. Uh, I want to say during the time that I was at Mina, uh, only a, a handful of times did did uh, Waldron come out on top. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely a big, big rivalry right down Highway 71 over on the west side of the state. And so, uh, you know, and those games are also fun, Brad, because you, you get to those games and you, you're excited, you're caught up in the moment. And to have it end uh, for Mina, uh, Mina fans have something definitely big to hang their hat on uh, as that was a, a very big win for the, the ball team. Max Montgomery threw for 325 yards and three touchdowns, including that Hail Mary, to end the ball game right there. I mean – just unbelievable, unbelievable reaction. I love to be a part of stuff like that, especially on the high school level, uh, because those kids will never, ever forget that. That goes down into the lore of Mina and Waldron and, and all of the the, the, the kids that are going to talk about that for years to come on both sides. Absolutely. And, you know, we knew the moment we saw that play Friday night, we knew that we were going to include that yeah. on this show. That was a, a must-have uh, kudos on whoever it was that, that was able to grab that video uh, and put it up. I want to say Coach said it was one of their student Yes, student, student journalists. Student journalists. So uh, great shot, and those are the kinds of shots that, that we're looking for. So, you know, hit us up on Facebook. If you get a good, uh, a good play, you get something like that on video, send it to us. We'll be happy to look at it. Absolutely. And we're going to get to our uh, primetime picks and primetime performers. But first, we've got the great Wes Moore. Coming on from Fearless Friday and Fox 16 out of Little Rock. We'll be back right after this. You're watching Primetime Preps on all of the ESPN platforms.
Here, in the heart of the River Valley, is St. Mary's Regional Health System. Here is the area's most comprehensive range of medical services, along with advanced treatment options and responsive emergency care. Here is our team of more than 900 professionals who bring health care to life through people caring for people. And it is here where you can count on St. Mary's to always be, because to us, community matters. For more than 90 years, our investment in our community has been unmatched. And today, that couldn't be stronger. St. Mary's, we're here for you. And joining us here on Primetime Preps is Fox 16 and Fearless Friday's Wes Moore. Wes, glad to have you along here. Man, I appreciate you guys asking me. Love talking high school football. Well, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk some high school sports, high school football in general. And, uh, of course, you know, right now the the bully on the block is Bryant. Um, They seem to be, you know, pretty much the team. Um, Of course, they've won the last two 7A state championships. And and here they are now, uh, seems to be far and away the best team in the state. Um, Are there any challengers to Bryant right now? You know, I look at North Little Rock. I love what J.R. Eldridge is doing there. Their defense is stepping up, the, the Charging Wildcats. And if you follow J.R. Eldridge and what he did at Arkadelphia, defense was a big key to the success that they had down there. But you look at now North Little Rock, they shut out West Memphis. They gave up a late second-half touchdown to Little Rock Central. The last two weeks, they've given up seven points on defense. Defense, winning 35 nothing, 48 to 7. You know what? They say defense wins championships. If you're going to slow down Bryant, you're going to have to play defense. So I look at, at North Little Rock and what J.R. Eldridge is doing. Uh, I think Cabot and Conway, those are two interesting teams in the 7A Central. Of course, the big game coming up for uh, uh, this week to me is North Little Rock and Conway. So we'll get a yes. feel for how good Conway is. And then Bentonville. And or yeah, Bentonville in the West. I have not seen them in person like I've seen some of these other teams, but they are very impressive going four and zero this season. So I would never count out Bentonville and the tradition and what they do out in Northwest Arkansas. Now Bentonville and Conway have matched up, have they not? This, this season, season? See, earlier this was that in week uh, two. I have I their schedule so. right here in front of me. Uh, yeah, Bentonville beat Conway in Conway, forty-seven twenty-one yeah. in week two. So Bentonville looks to be a primetime team. Yeah, no no doubt about it. Uh, they went up to Rockhurst and beat uh, Kansas City Rockhurst 21-17. And then I think the uh, impressive win over Mill Valley in Kansas, I think that was a defending state champion in Kansas or a team that's ranked at the top, if not the very top in Kansas. And that was a 35-28 win on the road. So you know what? They've uh, been tested by some of the best teams outside the state and one of, to me, the better teams in the state in Conway. So they've come away with a 3-0 non-conference record. And then, of course, the impressive win over Harbor last week, 45-6. to So, no, uh, Bentonville's the real deal. And they could – I expect to see those three teams that I mentioned in the semifinals of the 7A playoffs. Okay, moving on from the 7A, let's talk a little bit about – Pulaski Academy. Of course, they're kind of the monster out there. You know, you can throw Greenwood into that mix. And, and of course, the teams that you've mentioned, uh, of course, Warren over the years, you know, coming out of, uh, you know, the 7A class there. Uh, let's talk about PA a little bit. How good is PA this year? I don't think it's one of their best teams. I think it's one of the best coaching jobs that Kevin Kelly and his staff has done. Uh, you look at what they've been able to accomplish. First, they start off the season by playing Joe T. Robinson, a defending state uh, champion out of 4A, and they're loaded with talent. Uh, offensive line, secondary, running backs, they've got all kinds of Division One coaches recruiting their players. So that was a quality win. Then PA goes to Tennessee, beats Ravenwood. Uh, a very impressive win, but, but I think the most impressive win was beating Life Christian out of Virginia, Guys, that looked like a college team. and when They they had 17 players with D1 offers on wow. their team. There were some there were some big boys. You, some people can call them men versus boys, but uh, when they you, they were warming up, it looked like Life Christian should, should win that game by 20, 
20 points. But it's that PA style. It's mm-hmm. the system, the onside kicks, the going forward on fourth down. It just – it's a challenge for a team that's never played against that kind of style. And Life Christian wasn't as disciplined as they needed to be. And PA came away with a very impressive 31-20 to 20 win against Life Christian. So, I think – PA is uh, a very, very good team. But, you know, if you want to try to compare them to P- uh, PA teams of the past, I wouldn't say this is one of the better ones uh, just because of quarterback play. Right. Uh, they've been bouncing back and forth from Bruffett and Pfizer, a quarterback. It seems like they'll settle in on Pfizer and then he'll make a mistake and Bruffett comes <laughs> in. Um, it's, it's tough in this uh, Alaska Academy system when you don't have that kind of quarterback. And I say that, but they put up 59 points last week against Watson Chapel. So they're still doing something right offensively. Is there anybody in the 5A that can challenge them? That, that's a really good question. Uh, you know, Little Rock Christian seems to be down a little bit this year. I've seen them in person. Uh, I don't think they're getting the consistent quarterback play that they, they want to get. Um, I was at the Magnolia game that they lost. And, you know, they – they had some key and crucial turnovers, and then they started conference play against Maumel, and Maumel was hanging with them. And Maumel's a very talented team, kind of like a Joe T. Robinson, plenty of talent. Uh, but Little Rock Christian made some mistakes and allowed Maumel to hang in there. Second half, they cleaned up those mistakes and pulled away. Uh, but I, I don't know if it's the same Little Rock Christian team that we've seen the last two years. I, I have not seen win play. Uh, I know a lot of people have them ranked really high in 4A. Uh, maybe it's the second best team in 4A behind Pulaski Academy. Uh, I think you got to throw Magnolia in the conversation after they beat Little Rock Christian, but Magnolia has been out because of COVID-19, so they haven't played as, mu- as much. So um, I think it's still a, a PA's championship to win. To me, I would make them the uh, overwhelming favorite. I think that you're right about that. Of course, it seems like any time that PA is on the field, um, you know, other than maybe against Bryant, um, maybe a couple other teams sprinkled in there, they are the overwhelming favorite. Who are some of the better players that you've seen this year? Ooh, well, we'll stick with PA. Joe Hyman. Uh, I keep waiting for him to get some uh, high Division One offers. I don't know what SMU, New Mexico, uh, Memphis. Uh, I keep waiting for an SEC offer to come in because I, I see the highlights each week, and, man, he, he does something spectacular week after week. Uh, last week it was a run against uh, Watson Chapel that was just – he stopped on a dime on the sideline, stayed in bounds. Everybody ran by him. I guess that life Christian, he split two defenders and did a little circle move, and a spinning move like you would see on Madden. And <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a real – he's only a junior – but to me, Joe Hyman's a, a spectacular player. Frederick O'Donnell, I don't know if you've seen him play out of North Little Rock. He's a running back. He was a tight end. They moved him to running back, and he's found a home. And today he was offered by UAPB. Uh, he is, he's got a stiff arm that reminds you of someone who has one of the greatest stiff arms in Arkansas high school football history. Darren Darren Fett. Fett. Yeah. He does, man. He, <laughs> and he just he throws defenders – off of him or would-be tacklers he shoves them to the ground he is fun to watch if you haven't seen uh, Frederick O'Donnell play uh, make it a point to watch him play Brian is loaded uh, I don't know you know you can start with their quarterback who's committed to the Razorbacks to play baseball and a lot of people are saying hey football coaches you need to look at him too he's nothing but a winner and that's what what Brian's been doing uh, very smart and very accurate good touch on the ball uh, you know, Joe T. Robinson, Maumel, I mentioned their talent. They've got some big players, big guys. I'll be honest, you know, when I'm there at a game and I'm recording a game, I'm not necessarily watching the offensive line or defensive line. I'm following the ball. Uh, but they have some running backs that have been offered by uh, Memphis and Arkansas State. Uh, Cabot has a wide receiver that's a lot of fun to watch. And, and Searcy, we have not gotten up to Searcy, but people keep telling me about a running back, wide receiver, do-it-all player in Cersei that we, we just have to go and check out. I know he shows up in the highlights. It seems like every single week, uh, but Cersei's, uh, that, that, you know what? I know they got a new coaching staff and they're trying to uh, 
bounce back uh, from their state championship run. But I think Cersei and uh, uh, Daniel Perry, that's his name. I was trying to get his name in here real quick. But Daniel Player is a uh, – is Daniel Payne is uh, – Perry, let me get that right. <laughs> Daniel Perry is an explosive player to watch also. Of the – of course, we, we can talk always about the Warrens and the Bryants and, you know, all these big names, Fayetteville. What's a team that's kind of under under the radar that nobody's talking about that might be a good team in their class? All right. Any specific class you want me to go to? Uh, let's, let's, let's start, start with, with the 4A. 4A. All right. Um, 4A. You know, I, I like Stuttgart a lot. We featured them one Thursday night in our uh, Fearless Friday game of the week that we televised on uh, KARZ. But uh, Stuttgart is loaded with sophomores. And uh, Richard Davenport was telling us today that they have a sophomore that he thinks is going to be a, a big-time recruit in the state of Arkansas. And we're talking about, you know, two years from now before he's even a senior. But Stuttgart's off to a 3-0 and start, and they've uh, looked very impressive in, in their wins. Uh, they've knocked off Star City, shut out Warren 36 to nothing. And I know Warren was dealing with a lot of injuries that night. It's not often that you see Warren get shut out. In fact, we had to look it up. I think it was 2011, the last wow. time Warren was shut out and Mercy ruled in the same uh, same week. Wow. And then they beat uh, Batesville Southside last week, 42 to nothing. So Stuttgart's <laughs> coming off back-to-back shutouts. And their offense is fun, but uh, their coach talks about their defense and how fast it is. Josh Price has something mm-hmm. really good going on at Stuttgart. So I'd keep an eye on them. I've seen Lone Oak play uh, once, and they had some nice athletes, and I think Lone Oak's back. I don't know if they're ready to compete for a state title. Uh, you know, you're going to have your Joe T. Robinson, your Arkadelphia, your Nashville, uh, Shiloh Christians. But uh, I would say keep an eye on Stuttgart. Uh, if yeah. not this year, I mean, they're going to make the playoffs, and I would expect them to win their conference. But – uh, they'll get some playoff experience this year, but keep an eye on Stuttgart next year and the following year for sure. Uh, Coach Josh Price does such a great job with his teams over there at Stuttgart, and then of course he was at Dardanelle before that. And I mean, just an incredible, incredible coach, and um, really got the Dardanelle program started. Coach Vega has has extended it through now. They're they're doing a great job over there, but uh, Josh Price is is definitely one to watch there at Stuttgart. Um, you know, Wes, I, I really just want to know one last thing, and that is, what do you bench press? Because those guns on Fearless Friday, man, they're sticking out there pretty good. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, uh, Justin Acri and I, I don't even know how the conversation came up. and uh, He asked me, how much do you think you can bench? I was like, I, I'm, I can, I'm pretty confident saying I could bench 250. And one of our listeners said, I tell you what, if you can bench press 250, I'll buy you all lunch. And so we, we were at a gym. He got out the uh, phone. We put on 250, and I threw it up pretty easily. So, uh, there you, go. I, you know, my age, I, I don't throw on a lot of heavy weights and work out. I go with more uh, light, lighter weight and uh, higher reps. Uh, I'll work out with like 185 and do uh, four sets of 10 with that. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you I can do probably about 255. How about that? <laughs> I had a Man. little bit more left in me with that 250. I'll tell you what, I'm jealous. I won't lie. I, I'm jealous. You look good. You, you're doing a great job there at Fearless Friday. And we just we really appreciate you joining us today on a first ever primetime prep show. You bet. It's an honor to have me on. And like I said, I love talking high school football on Friday nights in the fall. There's nothing like it. Love doing Fearless Friday and bringing all the highlights to everybody in Central Arkansas. Thank you for having me. All right, that's Wes Moore, Fearless Friday and Fox 16. And we will be back with more primetime preps right after this. Here in the heart of the River Valley is St. Mary's Regional Health System. Here is the area's most comprehensive range of medical services, along with advanced treatment options and responsive emergency care. Here is our team of more than 900 professionals who bring health care to life through people caring for people. And it is here where you can count on St. Mary's to always be, because to us, community matters. For more than 90 years, our investment in our community has been unmatched. And today, that couldn't be stronger. St. Mary's, we're here for you. We're 
We're back for the final segment of Primetime Preps, which is the primetime games and primetime performers of the week. And Bill, I'd have to say this is a solid show for the first show. It really has been a pretty solid show. We've been looking at this thing uh, for weeks on end, it seems, now that it's finally here. I have to say I'm impressed. We've had some good talk with Coach Bentley out of Mina talking about their big win last week uh, against Waldron. Had a great visit with Wes Moore talking about football across the state. Hey, it's, it's a pretty good program. Absolutely. And so we're going to get to our primetime picks. Well, primetime games. We'll bring you some picks at some point. But uh, we're going to start out with the games. But before we get to that, we want to remind you, go to Facebook, like the Arkansas Sports Network, along with all of the ESPN platforms, um, SoundCloud, Google Play, all of those. I couldn't even begin to name them all. Um, Spotify. And, and and like those. Also, you see, Bill and I, I've got my Pottsville shirt on, if I can get around the mic here. Got to get back to it. And then Bill's got his Russell Cyclone shirt on. Uh, hey, you could send us some, your team swag. You could give us any kind of decals, a, even a flag behind us. We will we'll use it um, with your team. We're excited to do this, and uh, we want to bring you the best coverage that we can, and hey, you know what? We're we're fans of everybody right now. We want to we want to bring your team coverage and and some some you know just a little bit of coverage and and some attention. And not only the teams, you know, everybody has the teams that that they go for and they root for and they follow each and every week, but also the kids on those teams because it's the kids that that's one of the reasons why we do this. We want to showcase every athlete that we have around the state. And of course, you know, the, the more prime time that athlete is, the more prime time they're going to be on this program. But that's what we're looking for here on this show is to highlight and uh, you know, promote all of these kids across the state. Absolutely. And let's just get to it right now as we start out with probably the game of the week in the state with North Little Rock traveling to Conway. And that's a big game for Conway. You know, they've, they've had uh, a lot of different, uh, you know, games <laughs> kind of hadn't really went their way. Uh, they are what uh, one and two on the well, Conway's three and one, uh, but they have played one, teams. It. You know the the testing is, I guess, is the question. They played some named right. teams. They've had Fayetteville, they've had Bentonville, they've had Jonesboro. Fayette, Bentonville seems to be the best team of that bunch, and Bentonville got them pretty good, forty-seven to twenty-one. North Little Rock has looked solid, and they've continued their run of, gosh, I don't even know how many years now. They've been a very Big time player in in the state, and you know one of the teams that Wes talked about could be one of the contenders to Bryant because right now Bryant is the bully. They're they're the the mean one on the block, and uh, there there are people that are trying to take their crown. And one of them is North Little Rock. North Little Rock has really acquitted themselves well defensively lately, with uh, seven points given up in the last two ball games. Yeah, a lot of a lot of you know. Listen, you can't get much better. Uh, than North Little Rock right now. They have wins over Harbor at uh, 41 to 28. A win over uh, Fayetteville, 35 to 17. Knocked off West Memphis, 35 to nothing. And a win over Central, 48 to 7. So, you know, North Little Rock getting things done. And you look at Clarksville and you, you start, you know, kind of looking at the different opponents that they faced. And, you know, you know that North Little Rock is going to going to bring that wood, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Harbor... Uh, or rather, North Little Rock, uh, they're going to they're going to bring it to Conway, and it's going to yeah. be a, a close game. But it's going to really test the metal of the of the Wampus Cats. Absolutely, they're going to they're going to be tested this week, and probably you know if Bentonville or them, you know that's kind of a toss up who the best team is right now. So we'll see. Coach J R Eldridge, uh, former coach at Arkadelphia State Championship winner back to back years there at Arkadelphia, has come to North Little Rock and done a wonderful job there in his first season as a head coach. Moving on to 6A, uh, Salem Springs is uh, going to travel to Benton. And, you know, these two teams have been in the same conference. You don't think about a team from Benton and from Salem Springs as <laughs> far northwest as you can go, yeah. you know, two different parts of the state, like you said. But Salem Springs is at 3-1, and one, probably a little bit surprising at 3-1, and one, taking on Benton. That's probably a surprising 2-2. Two and two. Definitely so. You know, you start looking at, at the loss to Rogers, 52-42. You know, the Mounties, they're always pretty scrappy. Um, so that was a, definitely a, a big game for Siloam Springs. That's the only blemish that Siloam Springs has. The, the wins over Pea Ridge, 55-21. 
had a win over Harrison 34 to 14 and then defeated Van Buren in the pointers a close game 42 yeah. uh, 43 to 42 yeah and of course Benton has played the rival Brian in the salt bowl and uh, you know they they got beat pretty well but come back they bounced back beat Little Rock Southwest with new coach Daryl Patton, brand new school there. And then last week picked up a big win at Russellville, which was back and forth. And uh, the uh, Panthers scored 20 points in the fourth quarter to win that ball game 47 to 40. So this is a game that we'll be keeping our eye on starting next week. Or, yeah, this week. Uh, moving on into 5A, the big game of the week is uh, Little Rock Christian. Uh, taking on Whitehall. Whitehall, coached by one of the Bolding brothers. Um, one of the successful guys in the state, you know, one of the better coaches um, to really be in the state. He has moved on to Whitehall as uh, from Pine Bluff um, as the athletic director and the head coach over there, and has made a difference. But I'm not no, I don't know if he's going to make that much of a difference right now. As Little Rock Christian is one of the better teams in the 5A. Yeah, Little Rock Christian definitely able to to hold their own. Uh, with the big uh, big wins over Central 50, uh, 57 to 35. A win over Searcy 37 to 28. Had a win over Monmel one last week 27 to 17. And the only blemish came on their third game against Magnolia. Uh, who Magnolia, we are coming to find out, is a pretty tough ba- uh, football team in and of themselves. You know, Bobby Bolding, when he comes to your town, though, he's going to make your team better. Just like Brad Bolding. Brad Bolding has done a great job over at Little Rock Parkview and and really starting to produce some talent over there. Um, and, and Bobby Bolding, he's going to do the same thing at Whitehall. Whitehall's had athletes for years and years and years, but now they've got a guy to bring it uh, to you just kind of bring it together, you know. And so uh, Bobby Bowley's doing a good job. That's going to be a great game over there um, at Whitehall this week. Uh, Joe T. Robinson getting a chance to go to Texas and take on Trinity Christian um, out of Cedar Hill, Texas, which is uh, Deion Sanders' son's team, which Deion Sanders was the offensive coordinator there. I don't know what is going on with him right now because he just took the head coaching job now at Jackson State. So I'm not sure how that's going to work out as far as if Dion's on the sidelines or not anymore. But his son is still playing. But it's a game Joe T. Robinson team that's going down there. It really, you know, even though they're a 4A team, they're one of the best, you know, top five, six teams in the state probably. Without a doubt. You know, you had that, that loss against PA. Uh, of course, who doesn't lose to PA these days? Um, so you have Bryant. that, you know, Bryant, right? Um, but, you know, a lot of wins against Mom L, 28 to 20. Uh, wins at Marion, uh, 39 to 7. So that was a good thrashing there. And then Fountain Lake and the Cobras, a defeat. Uh, they defeated them 53 to 31. So, you know, uh, Joe T. Robinson, you know, I've played against Robinson. They're a tough team. They always have those athletes. Uh, you know, it's, it's fun to travel down the highway to get to it. I know it's a long road back when you go down there and get your tail whipped. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, Buddy Gaston, the quarterback there, 63 of 111 this year, 90, 946 yards. He was 15 of 20 versus Fountain Lake. It's hard to beat that. Um, so, also, we've got some under-the-radar games that we want to get to in each class. Uh, Little Rock Central traveling to Fort Smith Northside there. That's a big-time matchup there in the 7A Central. Uh, 6A, we've got Searcy traveling to West Memphis, one of the games of the week. Um, in the 6A. Russellville Van Buren, we know, Bill, that Russellville needs that victory versus Van Buren. They really do. You know, the pointers, that game is going to be at Van Buren. And so, you know, Russellville coming off that that hard-fought loss that was a, you know, we were kind of listening to that on the way back from our game uh, Friday night. It was definitely a close game, kind of surprisingly close, some might say. And, uh, you know, see how they can bounce back. Uh, from Russellville can from the loss that they had last week. It's going to be a, a good test. Hopefully get Russellville to get the running game going a little bit. Uh, Russellville held only to, what, 10 rushing yeah. yards last week? Not their forte by far. And and uh, uh, Benton actually has one of our pr- primetime performers. We'll get to that right after these under-the-radar games. Uh, Clarksville at Greenbrier. We've seen Clarksville. Clarksville is an underrated football team um, at one and two. Losses to Valonia and Ozark. Uh, look for that ball game to be a very close ball game at Greenbrier. Definitely so. And you know we did see um, uh, Clarksville in person. And one of the things that I will say about Clarksville is don't let them get anywhere close 
to kicking range. They have a sophomore <laughs> kicker um, that is absolutely dreadful uh, and if you're the opponent. Uh, this kid can kick it in from way downtown. Um, I think he was hitting them in from Ozark almost <laughs> at the game that we were at in Clarksville. So yeah. uh, kid's got a leg, and I would not be surprised if we start hearing him make some noise in the recruiting ranks. Uh, yeah, I mean, with that kind of leg, you would think that he could. Funny name that he has, E. She. E. She. she. I was trying to remember name. it. Yeah, and uh, he, he's, he did a great job for Clarksville. Clarksville is a athletic, very physical football team this year and really an underrated ball club. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm watching that game against Greenbrier this week. It's going to be interesting. Moralton traveling to Pea Ridge. Pea Ridge traveled to Alma this last week and got a victory. Uh, their first conference game, 5A West conference game ever, they, they pick up the victory. Pea Ridge has been on the scene in the 4A, been a very good team in the semifinals and in the state finals as of recent. Uh, they move into the 5A. They're doing a great job now. Uh, big win there at Alma. They've got a game, Moralton team, a team that we're a little bit familiar with. Yeah, definitely familiar a little bit with Moralton. Of course, Moralton uh, losing Jacoby Criswell. Um, he is now playing in uh, Powder Blue over in North Carolina. So, yeah. uh, you know, they have to replace that athleticism that uh, that Chriswell brought to the team. And, uh, you know, go on, go on the road. It's a long road trip as well. It is. Again, one of those, that 5A, man. you you got that 5A, then you've got basically a pocket of Northwest Arkansas teams, a pocket of Central Arkansas teams, and some of them have to play in the same conference. <laughs> there, It's it's kind of a, a weird deal there. And the 4A, uh, another team that we've gotten an eye on is Lamar. Lamar um, is, a, I, I think, maybe one of the more underrated teams in the state with Brady James at running back. Uh, very fast. Um, and, and, man, what a well-coached, well-disciplined team Lamar was. Yeah, absolutely. Josh Jones has Lamar in the right direction by far, and you can count on that each and every year with his coached teams. And uh, you're absolutely right. James last week, uh, he's very quick, very agile, able to get to the corner, make that seem, can make guys miss. And when he gets an open field, he turns on those afterburners and just flies. And, you know, he is a danger to be reckoned with, and we'll see how – Darnell, uh, you know, obviously also a well-coached team. Yes. And, um, you know, they are coming off of a, of a COVID delay. They did yes. not play last week. And so as such, hope everybody is healthy. Obviously, we don't want any, any, any uh, you know, health issues uh, and everybody's feeling better. But Darnell, well-coached. They have the speed. Can they contain James? It's going to be interesting to see how the AAA does the playoffs when – a team has to quarantine. That, I don't know how that's going to work. It's going to be a nightmare. Um, the game that we will uh, be at is the Mina Bearcats traveling to Pottsville. Of course, we talked to Craig Bentley earlier today about the Bearcat bomb and the, the win over Waldron. Now they are traveling to Pottsville in a game that both teams need very badly, but Pottsville may be more so than Mina after starting 0-1 losing to Lamar. Absolutely. You know, Pottsville, they started off looking really strong, 2-0, and uh, big victories over their opponents. But, again, I'm a big proponent of who they played. And uh, when when Pottsville was able to get in touch of, with Clarksville, uh, Charleston, and, and Lamar, wasn't able to handle those. So it'll be interesting to see how Pottsville is able to respond. Um, I do know at the very end of the Pottsville game against Lamar, uh, Coach Connor Carpenter did have a bit of a shoulder injury. Been trying to stay in touch with him throughout the week. He says it's pretty sore. Yeah, so we'll, that's quarterback there at uh, at Pottsville. So we'll see how that works out. Star City at Warren. Warren's down a little bit. Star City is a, a team that's always dangerous in that 8-4A. Um, Cedarville in the 3A uh, getting a chance and a shot at Charleston. And I know that all those teams down in that area love to beat Charleston. Um, Atkins and Perryville, a very big time rivalry there, um, going to match up this yep. week in, in a game that's a big game with the implications in the four three eight. You're absolutely correct, and I, you know, I'm, I'm an alum of Atkins. I, I went to school there, played for the football for them, and so I know how big of a game Atkins Perryville is. You one thing you can count on when you get to that game is both teams are going to play with heart. They're going to play very physical. And it's going to be a pretty rough ball game, and that game is at Perryville, and I can't find those. They're still the same fans that I remember. They're pretty crazy. Yeah, they're rabid at Perryville for sure, no doubt. 
Um, moving on into 2A, Dirks traveling to Poen and Mountainburg. Uh, traveling to Magazine, Mountainburg is uh, trying to stay in that 4-3A race. They've, they've kind of had the uh, uh, unfortunate of having to have some delays with COVID. They're 1-1 one one this year. They've only played two ball games. Um, looking at that, that uh, 4-2A, you've got Hector, Magazine, Quitman, and Bigelow, and Mountainburg is right there trying to stay into that fifth slot there. And Well, I say fifth slot, one of the top five teams in the area, or in the, that conference, I should say. And uh, they're, they're battling, trying to move up that rung, and, and a, a win at Magazine would help them do that. It really would. And Magazine, of course, a very, very physical ball club. I remember... Uh, several years back, and I may date myself here, where they played uh, in the state title game yes. against Danville. It was a game that I called uh, on the radio. Uh, one thing you can count on, again, with this ball club is that Magazine is going to play hard-nosed football. They're going to try to throw it at you. They're going to run it at you. They're going to try to develop the run from the pass. Uh, very physical ball club and usually has a good considered uh, amount of speed. Yeah. And, and, man, what a great run game they had last season. So I'm, I'm interested to see – how that turns out this year. And I'm actually a, a Mountainburg alum, <laughs> believe it or not. I, I graduated high school at Mountainburg, and I keep up with them um, when I get a chance to. All right, so moving on, let's move on to our primetime performers as we get ready to close up shop on this first ever primetime prep show. And as you can see here, we got four studs. Um, Big time performances last week. Logan Cronister of Alma, 33 carries. 281 yards and four touchdowns, and Alma lost. <laughs> and Mr. Cronister, wow. yeah, really, set the Alma record for rushing yardage in a game at 291. And, I mean, you 33 carries, 281 yards, and four touchdowns. Let me tell you, 33 carries, you're running your legs off horse. at that point. You're putting the entire team on your shoulders. And, uh, you know, one man can only do so much. But what an outstanding performance by Logan Cronister. And, you know, that's a theme here in our uh, primetime performances of the of the week. Uh, Casey Johnson of Benton, 37 carries, 250 yards against Russellville, two touchdowns as he helped the Benton Panthers win 47-40 to 40 in a big 6A West game. That's right. That's right. And, of course, you know, we talked about Benton earlier. That's a very, very well-coached ball club. And Casey Johnson is one of the reasons why they are so successful. When every time you can run for over 250 yards on 37 carries and pull, put it in the end zone twice, you're doing something right. Gavin Graham of Russellville in that ball game against Benton. Six receptions, 213 yards, and three touchdowns. And I can tell you, Gavin did not start the season at wide receiver, but since he has come on, has just exploded for the Cyclones and really being a catalyst for them. You know, Russellville's one and three right now with it. I think they've lost by a total of 16 points this season. Probably so. And, and I think that Russellville, one of the things that, that we mentioned earlier is, you know, their struggles in the running game. And, you know, Gavin Graham is, is one of the, the benefits of, you know, or one of the, one of the good things that Russellville has going for them right. uh, because of that lack of running. So one of the things that you can count on with Gavin Graham is he's probably going to get some double coverage going on. They don't have to worry about protecting the run as much right now. And so Gavin Graham able to get off 213 yards and three touchdowns while most likely and being double covered is quite impressive. He has had quite a season so far in a shortened season for him at wide receiver. Donovan Nooner of Atkins, 34 carries, 213, or I'm sorry, 38 yards, three touchdowns in their 34 to 16 win over Baptist Prep to really set themselves up to be a, a maybe a two seed there in that conference. As we know that Boonville is a they're a power there in the 3A. But Donovan Nooner, one of the better players in the state that nobody really knows about. 34 carries, 238, and three touchdowns. Definitely a good performance by Nooner, of course. You know, he's a senior this year, and last year Atkins was more of a pass-oriented offense with Eli Robertson coming out. Atkins with a new coach this year. Uh, looks like Coach uh, Coach Cody has stepped aside. And so Atkins getting it done on the ground. Yep. Nooner doing it, 34 carries, three touchdowns. You know, they, they lost Eli Roberson last year, and Roberson was just such a stud 
at quarterback last year, throwing 45 touchdowns last year and over 3,000 yards. But Atkins has not really missed a beat offensively. And not really. Of course, it looks like now they're getting a lot more yards on the ground. And, of course, anybody, by the way, if you have not seen him play, if you didn't have an opportunity, this kid was, what, six foot nine, six foot ten. I mean, this dude is a monster of an athlete, he could easily throw it over any defensive line. You're talking about Robertson. I was talking about Robertson. Nooner is not 6'10". And (laughs) and that's why you're seeing the likes of of Donner uh, Nooner uh, getting it done on the ground because what do you have in the backfield? Uh, You you make do with what you have, and and Atkins is is no stud, uh, no shame. they got the athletes to be able to do what they need to do. Absolutely. And so that was our primetime performers of the week. And uh, we just want to say thank you uh, for watching and listening to the first ever Primetime Preps podcast here on Hit That Land, Arkansas, um, on all the platforms. Plus, you can watch this or we'll be watching this on Facebook as well. Um, And as we end the program today, uh, we would like to say our condolences actually to the Atkins School District. As Jody Jenkins, the superintendent there, recently passed away just in the last couple days. And if you didn't know Coach Jenkins to Russellville and um, Ozark, he was Principal Jenkins. And at Johnson County Westside, he was Principal Jenkins. And then he, he went into Alma, uh, got a chance to, to um, teach over there, moved to Atkins as his home school, as their superintendent. Uh, just a joy to be around Jody Jenkins, and uh, you know it's it's a heartfelt condolences by our primetime preps crew when we say that uh, we're sorry and we're praying for you today, uh, Atkins School District and the family of Jody Jenkins as uh, they have endured quite a loss. Yeah, definitely a, a big big loss for the Atkins School District. Jody Jenkins, you know I was at several different sporting events for the Red Devils over the last couple of seasons and, and just about every game you see Jenkins there. He, he was the first out on the field or out on the court to congratulate um, the coaches. Uh, definitely a, a great guy. And, and I've, I've read so many tributes to Jody Jenkins uh, over the last couple of days where he would just make a third grader smile by greeting them when he gets yes. off the bus. And you can't find a better guy than Jody Jenkins, and it's it's unfortunate loss for the Atkins School District. So we're going to wrap it up with a moment of silence for Jody Jenkins. <laughs> 